So after the end of 2018, we've been taking questions from everyone on Instagram. People have been submitting via DM and commenting on our videos. Today, we're gonna to be answering them in this video. Bryony's gonna be reading them out and we'll give the answer. At CNP Gospel asks, how can I boost my music on Spotify to gain more followers and get on big playlists? Basically, to get your streams up, to get your followers up, you do need to be on those playlists. You need to start small, essentially. So basically, you can find those curators and influential people. Usually, they're just on Facebook and they're regular people who happen to have playlists that have built up a huge amount of followers. You can do this because their username actually corresponds with their name on Facebook. And you can just message them and politely ask them to consider your music for their playlist. When you find that you're actually getting on those playlists, then you'll get streams from the playlist and also trigger the Discover Weekly algorithm. So you'll get organic streams that way as well. And people will naturally follow your profile. Yeah, we'd also suggest submitting via Spotify for Artists. So um, you can actually potentially get on these Spotify official playlists. We suggest about four to six weeks before release date you should be submitting. You basically just go on Spotify for Artists and you can submit and there's a simple form um, and that basically means that on release day you might be added to a Spotify official playlist. At Kitty Got Claws asks, do you think I would benefit from management at this stage in my career or is it not necessary as I already fill the role myself? I feel like if you already fill that role then you don't need a manager. They, they are there to support you when it gets too much, when you can't deal with everything coming through or you feel you're kind of stuck and there is some contacts you need to get and you feel like a manager could get those contacts for you. But at yeah. an early stage in a career, emerging artists don't really need one. No, you need to find a manager that's actually going to add value because essentially yeah. you're going to be giving away between 10% to 15% of your income, mm -hmm. probably signing a deal for three to five years. If they're not adding value and they're essentially just taking a workload that you could have done anyway, then it's probably a waste of money. You're also adding a communication barrier between mm -hmm. you and other opportunities as well. So you, you really want to be able to jump on opportunities pretty quickly rather than it going to opportunity, your manager, and then you. At Jake the Hoff asks, I'd like some advice on how to find other musicians like myself who work hard and when they say I'm a musician, they actually mean it. Just engaging with people rather than just posting your music constantly mm -hmm. or asking questions constantly. Yeah, become part of the community. Yeah, exactly. Basically. If people recognise your name as someone that's engaging and sometimes offering advice, they're going to respect you a lot more. Uh, so where, by the time you're actually looking for something, they're, they're going to want to actually help you. Reddit's a good one as well. There's yeah. a huge amount of subreddits for musicians. There's uh, We Are The Music Makers, which has got a great community. I think it's like on 100,000 musicians are on that at the moment. So you can really put up posts saying, I'm looking to network with people or just vibe with people. Also, another one is Instagram. Look up Instagram hashtags such as uh, hashtag new music, for example, because you said... How do you uh, network with like-minded people? Uh, and also, are they going to be the real deal? You can actually see their um, efforts on Instagram mm -hmm. anyway. So if they're not really doing much, then the chances are they're just not going to add any value to you either. But if they're really working hard and putting the time into it, then that's always a good sign. So you can yeah. just DM them on, on Instagram. At Ollie Rodwell asks, how do I get my fans to interact with me more and how should I be interacting with them? Okay, I'd say the best place for interacting with fans at the moment is Instagram. Uh, it's just amazing with being able to engage with people. You have the ability to do stories, so you could do polls, you could do Q&A. You can DM, you can reply to comments. There's so many different ways you can interact with people. It's such a versatile platform as well. Like yeah. You can do so much. You can put up videos, you can put up images, you can write entire blog post below your image, for example. Or you could even just go raw and do things like Instagram stories. There's just so much you can do. You can just make it your own and tell your story across that platform. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you can just do what you want. Instagram is the one to get engagement. At Ariane asks, how should I grow my Instagram? Okay, I mean, quite a general question. It's quite hard to answer when you don't know what kind of content strategy you've got in place already. But the main thing is to find a theme at first. Uh, and that can be really difficult to do because as an artist, you sometimes feel that your music alone is the theme. But that shouldn't really be the, th the main thing you're going with. So the first few weeks you might be exploring with your theme might be seeing which things work, which ones don't. And when you do have that theme, you need to stick with it and just be posting daily. And hashtags as well. Yeah. Like 
20 plus hashtags mm -hmm. and really think about the hashtags people are going to be searching as well. A lot of people put hashtags of like what's happening in the post, but realistically... Or their artist people, name or something like that. Yeah, which... they try to start a trend with their artist name or try to start a theme, but really in the early stages, concentrate on what people are actually going to be searching for. Yeah. Also, which we've discussed before, but the idea of appreciating every follower you get. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people when they're below 1K followers think that they're just sort of numbers and you've only got a few, so it doesn't really matter. But in those early days, every single follower counts. If you get a follower, you should DM them immediately, thanking them, discussing what kind of content they're looking for, what kind of content they enjoyed on your profile. So you can start relationships and then those followers are actually gonna stay because there's no point having that initial 200 if after a week they're gonna unfollow you. At WCFW Kyle asks, how can I strategize a pledge slash pre-order campaign to fund future releases? Okay, um, I don't think a lot of artists really use pledge campaigns as much as they used to, but I, I do think they can be effective if you're doing it in the right way. You need to be showing your audience that you're going to be giving them something in return. Because I know for well if someone came up to you in the street and asked for money, you wouldn't give it to them for no reason, so you need to be giving something. So you could do a recorded message, you could do a show at their house, like however extreme you want to go but it needs to be offering something that they actually see it as value. Yeah, artists often make the mistake of thinking things like that, that the quality of the music is gonna be the driver, yeah. and it's not, it's the loyalty of your fan base that actually drives that success. So you should actually focus more on having a loyal fan base that you're engaged with, who where they actually might part with their money mm. instead of uh, getting out to the masses as much as possible because it's mm. great music that's not necessarily going to make people pledge. At Worst Dressed in the Inner West asks, have you ever tried messenger bots like ManyChat for gathering subscribers? I haven't used mm. mes uh, messenger bots. I know that a lot of marketing companies do it. We tend to advise to stay away from any kind of automation because if it's not approved by Instagram or Facebook, the chances are you might actually get your account banned. Also, the thing about bots is they can't develop a relationship with people. Mm -hmm. It's just a method of getting things out there to as many people as possible. And you never develop any kind of rapport with people. Mm -hmm. And it is very, very difficult to make a bot look like it was written by a human. Yeah. Uh, all of our DMs on the Burst Amount account are just all written by us. And that's because there's just no replacing human interaction. Yeah. To, to just reply to a message, to reply to a comment, to, to send someone a DM, isn't that time consuming, but it has such strong effects. It's if you're if you're messaging someone a personal message, they're gonna say a follower. Whereas if you're if you're sending this automated message, they might actually automatically unfollow because it does it does look so fake. Zero T Y Z Zero has got a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. The first one is how do I start building a fan base if I don't really have one? If this is on Instagram, then just actually creating content. Yeah. You'll find that even creating an Instagram account and putting one post up with hashtags will start to get you followers. Mm. So that's essentially the best place to start. But remember, like in this point in your career, every single successful musician has been in this situation. Yeah. Like nobody ever starts with a, like any kind of boost or like with a ready-made fan base. Mm. Everyone started here. So if you think it's impossible, it's definitely possible. We, we get asked quite a lot. What do I do if I haven't released any music yet or I, I haven't done anything yet? Where should I start? And the, the kind of immediate answer is just do it. Mm. <laughs> it, it's, it sounds stupid, but people are constantly looking for answers when they haven't even tried it yet. So I think before searching for the best things to do on Instagram, the best ways to release music, just try it yourself first because you never know what is going to work for you. Okay, so question number two is, I do talent show gigs and people like my music. How should I take advantage of these gigs? Film them. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. If you're allowed to get a videographer down, uh, they don't cost a huge amount of money depending on their experience, but it, it's basically, if there's not a huge audience there at least you can always walk away with the asset of a, a video of you playing mm. and then you can put it on your social media you can send it to other venues it essentially will become an, an asset for you yeah. and show how good you are as a musician so you should always be just squeezing as much as you can out of every opportunity you have to play live at green scream asks how do i find money to fund my music project i can't do an office job because it takes up too much time i would disagree with that um, the idea of having an office job takes up too much time mm. because majority of artists, if they have a full day to be working on their music, 
probably won't actually get that much done. Whereas if you have a nine to five job or even just a part time job, the, the amount of time you have to squeeze your music into can actually make you work a lot harder. Whereas sometimes if you quit everything and you're just focusing on the music, there's a lot of pressure on it for one. Mm. Um, so the passion might that, the yeah. might the passion might go, and you you might find that you're just like grabbing at all opportunities of money, which means you're no longer doing it for the love of the music and to build a fan base, build relationships, and just get your music out there, which is the main aim of it, really. Absolutely, yeah. It sounds like you put way too much pressure on the music itself. And yeah, you're destined to fail if you keep making those short-term decisions just mm. because you need to make money out of things. You need to have a long-term plan and you need to find something that's going to support that long-term plan, even if it's just working in a bar and a restaurant nine to yeah. five and then for the rest of the time making music, but just don't put too much pressure on your music. Yeah, I think I think the, the main thing to come from this answer is you're not going to, in the early stages, make enough money from your music to fund your career. Mm. It's just, it's not sustainable. Um, there's not enough money in digital streaming alone for them to make money off of that so you need to initially have money coming in from other areas and by the time you start seeing an income coming in from the music that's when you can look at doing it full time Mm -hmm. Um, and even when you do the money isn't going to be coming from one area unspoken words 2018 has asked what do you think is the best way for a songwriter to get a publishing deal the the best way to do it is essentially create the best music you can and send it to as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. You could get something like the Unsigned Guide, which is a complete database of all of the publishers and just go through it and send it to everyone. But don't just do that. You can find them on LinkedIn. You can write something personal to them. You can add them on LinkedIn, Um, but just do something a little bit different. Don't expect just to go through all the submission forms and things to happen. You really need to show them something different. So say you've got your music placed on five YouTube videos. Okay, you're not making money, you give it away for free, but it proves that your music is worth adding to synchronization, basically. What do you mean by engage? Is it when you answer comments? I feel uncomfortable calling people out individually. Okay, so I think the best way to explain engaging is just communication. Um, building relationships. Mm -hmm. You can simply be replying to comments. Mm -hmm. You can simply be doing polls in your story, Q and A's. Um, Engaging just means communication. It it means starting relationships with people. Mm -hmm. And that that doesn't mean you have to show your face to do that. And it means that people feel like they're making an impact on your content. Mm -hmm. So they're following you. But if they so wished, they can make an impact either voting on a poll and then you can go and do something based on their vote or based on their comment. It's not just them sitting back and watching you do your thing. At Colin Morlock has asked, I'm curious what you and your team think about the follow unfollow method on Instagram accounts. Does it really work? I see people with huge following accounts that do it all the time and has always seemed a really cheap way to build a fan base. Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't do it. Mm. Um, I've worked with artists who have over 30,000, 50,000 followers and they've done it by following and unfollowing. Mm -hmm. And when we put up an Instagram story, it got less than 300 views, which means that the people who are actually following you are not engaged. I know there's bots out there that will do it for you, where we've tested it on just like test accounts, and it does get you thousands of followers very quickly, but they're not engaged. They're never going to be fans. The Instagram algorithm will not favor you because it favors engagement. So Mm -hmm. if you have 1,000 followers, but your engagement is like 0.1%, mm. then it's not going to push out your content to further to people. Mm. And I also think that the main aim with following and unfollowing is to grow the numbers, um, and that shouldn't be the point of yeah. your social media. The point of your social media is to grow fans, um, and followers aren't always fans. You, you want every single person to come through to engage with you, to appreciate your content and then eventually listen to your music. You should just forget about the numbers and be looking at the interaction. At Rodwell Music asks, if there's one piece of advice you could give a young artist to stick with them their whole career, what would it be? Okay, I think something that all artists should have from the beginning to end always is to stick with what they actually enjoy doing. We so often see people that are releasing music to fit with the the most popular genre at the moment or what's charting and that isn't going to help you because what's going to happen is you're going to release I don't know a pop song because pop is working in the charts at the moment and then 
you might get successful from that. But then what? You, you've, you're stuck in this genre that you don't even like doing. So I think the most important thing to remember is release music that you enjoy creating, that you enjoy pushing out. And as long as you're doing that, you're going to be happy and you're going to be creating music that you love. And that's the most important thing, really. Yeah, and uh, we find that a lot of people change their style too early in their career yeah. as well. They get kind of, uh, they feel like they're getting pigeonholed or they feel like they've built their audience in this genre and then we're going to try something different. But really, even if you've got a million streams on Spotify, you shouldn't be changing your style. Like the 1975 are only just change their style now and even still it's not a massive change it's it's still fitting to their, their mm, indie sound yeah. but yeah just don't get cold feet on your style and just yeah. keep going with that style for many many years because that is essentially you and that's where you're growing i'm selling out local venues but i have no contacts to apply to festivals is it time that i start looking for a booking agency i think if you're selling out local venues i think the first thing you should do is take it outside of your town take it outside of your city because selling out your local area is amazing and you can use that portfolio to go to larger venues, to go to, to different cities. Um, so definitely look at doing that first because when you're pitching to festivals, it's great that you might be the biggest artist in, in your village, but they kind of want a bit more um, legitimacy behind you. So do look at taking outside of your area first. But there are a lot of festivals that, that actually have an open application process. There are a few places that you literally have a submission form on the website when about six months prior to the festival. So definitely give that a go because there mm -hmm. is some success in that as you have smaller stages for emerging artists. And we all say get those live videos in, mm -hmm. uh, have really good professional recordings. That might actually be a better asset to you for those applications than a booking agent yeah. ever will be. At Brad G400 has asked, producing music seems to be impossible to get started. Would you suggest getting lessons? I would probably just suggest doing it yourself, going on YouTube. There's literally videos for everything. Mm, that's true. Um, and it's free. It, it it does depend how much time you have because um, teaching yourself something does take a lot of time. But um, I, I think that YouTube basically has all the answers to, to self-producing. The time you invest learning yourself, you probably would have been investing and in paying someone to teach you. Mm -hmm. So we'd probably suggest just looking up YouTube tutorials for that. And if you get to a certain point and it can't take you any further, then maybe get lessons from someone more experienced. Yeah. But um, in the early stages, then YouTube is amazing for learning to do things. We hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment and we'll answer them all. If you like the video, then feel free to like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Yeah, if you look at all my videos, I have a, I do the like, subscribe, and then I go, thanks for watching. That's why she gets more subs. <laughs> <laughs>